Okay, so we're going to get uh, hop in today with radians to degrees. Our radians versus degrees. What are they talking about? Are they similar? Are they different? Why do we even have two versions? It's almost like metric and imperial. Why do we do this to ourselves? Are we one human species? Um, so let's go ahead and talk about first starting with degrees. And we've all seen degrees. We've seen it in geometry plenty of times. You guys have known some very popular degrees like 90 degrees, right? We did that for Pythagorean theorem before. Um, we know 360 when you go all the way around a circle. And we know 180 when you cut that in half and even again back to 90 degrees, right? That's 90. So how much do we turn? Whoops, going the other way. How much do we turn? So a couple of things I want to talk about is one, where does degrees come from? And why is it some abstract number 360? If aliens came from another planet right now and said, and we try to communicate with them, we said, we have a circle. 360 degrees and they'll be like okay 360 why do you choose 360 now I want to ask you guys in the crowd why do you think they came up with a number 360 where do you think 360 is from we can hypothesize even without looking into math history that 360 degrees is in reference to the number of days in a year that if we were in some type of circular motion across this vast universe and around something called a sun, 360 would be this round unit that we could use. And that's where this abstract number 360 comes from. It comes from someone saying, hey, 360, like the number of days in a year. So accurate. So if aliens came and looked at our planet and we try to communicate with them with math, and that's how people say that we would communicate with aliens, with math, and we start throwing out 360, we'll be like, what's wrong with these fools? What's 360? Because 360 only applies to the planet Earth. In Mars, this would be a longer time. In Venus and Mercury, this would be shorter. Right? In Pluto, this could be like in the thousands. So 360 is an abstract number that works with, with the Earth. Now, to get away from that, that's where they came up with, with radians. And we'll talk about what a radian is in a little bit after we talk about our degrees. So let's come up with some other special degrees that we've drawn out already. So we have 90, we have 180. If I continue with my 90 count, we have 270 degrees, 270, and then back to 360. Let me help you count with simple algebraic multiplication. Nine times two is 180. Nine times three is 270. 9 times 4 is 360, right? We can think of this as just multiples of 9. If I want to keep going, the circle never ends. We can keep going, and 9 times 5 is 450. 9 times 6 is 54. 9 times, uh, we said 5, 6, 9 times 7 is 63. 9 times 8 is 72. And that works. That's 720 is two circles. So if you want to keep going around, this can go on infinitely many times. And we have a special term for this. And these terms are called coterminal. Coterminal. So 90 degrees and 450 are coterminal points meaning, or coterminal angles, I'm sorry, coterminal angles, meaning they give you the same amount of turn, they give you the same amount of turn, <clears throat> excuse me, um, just on a different level of circle. So if I turn 90, so imagine if me standing here, you hear my eyes, right? And I turn 90 degrees. So my eyes will be looking this way now. But if I turned a angle of 450 degrees, we would still be facing the same direction. So what coterminal angles tell us is that they are the same angle, 
just maybe not on the same circle. What else is coterminal? Well, the angle 5, 40 is coterminal with 180. So we would be facing in the same direction. So I'm asking you guys for coterminal angles. They're always related by 360 degrees because it's just one circle away. And let's try it. Let's do our first one. 90 plus 360 becomes 450. 90, sorry, in this case, next one, 180 plus 540, this adds up, oh, sorry, what am I doing? I'm sorry. 180 plus 360 adds up to 400, 540. So every time you want to find a coterminal angle, it's always 360 degrees away because it's one full circle away. And it's a fancy word for angles that stop at the same spot. So let's come up with another one on the side. If I say 30 degrees, a small little angle, 30 degrees on a circle, what would be a couple of coterminal angles to this? Now, not only do we go forward, but we can also go backwards using negative angles. So let's go forward first. So if I say 30 degrees plus 360 gives me 390 degrees. So this would be a coterminal angle with 30 degrees. Now, I'm gonna show you guys this in a measure. If I go ahead and you can use a different color here. If I start at zero degrees and I go, whoops, going around, wouldn't the one full circle be 360 plus a little bit? That will get us to 390, which is the same to us coterminal as just doing 30 degrees. Have you guys ever ran laps around a track? And you have people who are walking and people who are running. Don't you start lapping the people who are walking? Maybe you're the walker. Don't the runners lap you? The idea is that you guys are still in the same position, just on different laps, but you're still in the same position in a sense. Okay, so we can go backwards. Let's go the other way around. So instead of going a positive angle, adding, we can subtract that angle going backwards. Use a different color here. Hopefully you guys aren't red and green colorblind like me. So if I start at 30 degrees and I go backwards in a negative fashion, by 360 degrees. So we're at 30 degrees minus 360 degrees. That gives us negative 330 degrees. So does this make sense that it's negative 330? That's walk it out. Here we go. If I go from zero degrees over, this would be negative 90. This would be negative 180 and negative 270. From negative 270, negative 270, to get to negative 330, how many more angles do we need? We need another 70 to 300 is 30, and to get to 330, that's 60. I need negative 60 degrees. If you look here, this would be our negative 60. So we are actually at the same exact spot as 30 degrees, which is also coterminal to 390. So 30 degrees as well as 390 degrees as well as negative 330 degrees are all coterminal. These are just talking about relationships. The reason why these are actually important is because when we start using sine and cosine and tangent, if I ask you what is the sine of 30 degrees, what is the sine of 390 degrees, and what is the sine of negative 330? And if you plug these all in the calculator, it turns out they all give you the same answer of 1 half. Because they're all related they give you the same angle, so the same ratios. Okay, let's continue on with this, some other keywords. Let's go ahead and actually um, talk about 
what a radian is now. There's a fancy way of calculating radians, and the formula they like to give you in the book is this, theta is equal to s over r, where s is your um, arc, the measure of the arc, which refers to, draw this on the side, the arc is how much of the circle you're looking at. So that is my s. It's actually, it's like, it's like the perimeter or circumference but just for that angle, just this part here. The R is the radius. So essentially, if we look at this at a basic algebra one level, a radian is how many radiuses, radii, are in that arc. How many radii are in that arc? So we describe a circle in this form when it comes to radi radians. A full circle, and we're drawing it to the right, is made up of 2 pi. And you guys might have seen that before in geometry. What is half a circle? If a full circle is 2 pi, what is half a circle? Well, 2 pi divided by 2 right. is just pi. So what we want to say now is these angles of 2 pi and pi are actually synonymous with 180 degrees and 360 degrees. They're equivalent to each other, except we're just speaking different language. Um, bathroom versus baño. Bathroom, baño. Hmm? English is Spanish. Make sure if you ever go to Mexico or any part, not all of South America, but you know how to say bathroom. You can't just point to yourself and wet yourself and say, oh, I need to go. Okay. So these are equivalent statements to us. I'm going to say, what's half of pi? Half of pi is pi over 2. Oops, let me use a different color. Pi over 2. That's equivalent to half of 180, which is 90 degrees. And we're going to cut that one more time in half. A half of 50 cents is a quarter is pi over 4, which is another way of saying 45 degrees, because half of 90 is 45. Okay, so I'm going to start counting um, up here. That's count by, um, let's start here, at pi over 2. Pi over 2 plus pi over 2 becomes pi, or 2 pi over 2. So if I walk, just so we'll look here, this is 90 degrees, right? If I add another 90 degrees, aren't we at 180? Aren't we at pi? So to look at this, pi over 2 plus pi over 2 is 2 pi over 2. And another way of writing 2 pi over 2 is just pi. But you can jump around this way, and the fractions kind of fall into place. It will always fall into place. Because the two can. Mm. Okay, so let's keep walking. If I add another 90, if I add another 90 here, add another 90, we are at 270. Okay, we are at 270. Um, but for 270, what would that be in radians? Now, here's something kind of dumb it's pi over 2 plus 2 pi over, darn it, plus comma, pi, 2 pi over 2, right? It's so this is my second one. And then we go to 3 pi over 2, and then 4 pi over 2. 3 pi over 2 is what we call it, 3 pi over 2. Why? I have three halves. I have 1 half, 2 half, 3 halves. Once I'm at 4 halves, doesn't that reduce down to just 2 pi? And we're back to where we started. Okay, so one thing, one of our takeaways is that even if I walk around with a fraction, when I reduce it, it ends up to be what we expected at pi and 2 pi. Now we're gonna get this uh, even more crazy. I'm gonna use a different color. So make sure you can keep up here. We're gonna count by pi over 4. Pi over 4. 
So I'm going to write an upper right corner, pi over 4. Next one would be 2 pi over 4, counting up, would be 3 pi over 4, comma, 4 pi over 4. Let's stop there for a moment. So first stop would be pi over 4, right? Then we would see 2 pi over 4. Doesn't 2 pi over 4 reduce? 2 pi over 2. Hey, we're there. Going the distance, my next move, we're at 3 pi over 4. Now, let's talk about the radian version of this. 90 degrees plus a 45. See how this is 45 here? 90 plus 45 is going to be 135 degrees. Okay, between radians and degrees, they're synonymous with each other. Let's keep going. Um, we're at What's 4 over 4? Over here, what's 4 over 4? Doesn't that reduce down to be a simple pi? So we're at pi, and we are at pi here. Keep going. 4 becomes 5 pi over 4. Let's write it 6 pi over 4, 7 pi over 4, and 8 pi over 4. See, I'm just saying 5, 6, 7, 8. I'm writing this so you guys can see there's relationships, because I can reduce is to become 3 pi over 2, which we have already. And doesn't 8 divided by 4 become 2 pi? Which we have already. So the other ones would be 5 pi over 4. And this would be 7 pi over 4. Now, a lot of people, when they first learn this, they have problems counting quickly. So let me say this again. When they first learn this, they have problems counting quickly. So I want to help you guys count. In fractions, we're going to learn how to count in fractions. First, decide what fraction you're working with. In this case, I'm going to start working with 4, pi divided by 4. If we know we're counting in quarters, look here. Isn't this on the left-hand side 4 pi over 4? Couldn't you say this is 4 pi over 4? It is always the same number over itself. That's how we end up with 1 full pi. Now, Again, to help you count fast, what's one bigger than four? Five pi over four, that's one quarter bigger. What's one less? Back from four is three. So I feel like if we can get from pi to two pi, it's always easy to go forward and backwards because it's just one step up and one step down, no matter what fraction I'm counting by. Now here is another hint, whenever you see a four on the bottom, it is always a 45 degree angle, always. Whenever you see a two on the bottom, it is always going to be a 90 degree angle. We have two more angles to cover. It's gonna be a divide by three and a divide by six, a 30 and a 60 degree angle. So again, to count quickly, instead of going one, two, three, we can go backwards and say 4 minus 1 is 3, or 4 plus 1 is 5, to go backwards or to go forwards. Now, how many radians is 360 degrees? Can we say that's 2 pi's? We said this is 8 pi over 4. Now, one cool thing about any radian, it's always double your fraction. Let me pause. Um, So whenever we have pi over 2, it'll be 90 degrees. When we, even if we have pi over 4, it'll always be 45 degrees. And that's kind of hint. And that kind of helps us here. Like, <clears throat> to get 5 pi over 4, isn't that just 1 extra pi over 4? That means we're at 180 degrees, and we add 45 to that. This will be 225. And you can say, if I'm going backwards for 7 pi over 4, it's going to be 360 minus 45, and that's going to give us 315. So I want to make sure you guys catch this right now. You're going to need to memorize this unit circle, not only by counting by pi over fours, but also pi over twos. <clears throat> we have 45 and 90 degree types of angles throughout this whole circle. Now, you need to memorize this again. 
let me go ahead and highlight what you need. You need to memorize this whole section here. Okay. All that stuff that's highlighted. So that's our first unit circle. We have one more to go, and we're talk about the other angles. So let's go ahead and take a look at the other unit circle, and we'll come back and we'll talk about how do we calculate radians and where do radians come from. So this is more like the practical part. Go into the circle. Cut this into halves. So we have zero degrees. Sorry, let's write zero on top. Zero, 360, as well as 180. We have 90 on top, and we have 270 on bottom. Now, <clears throat> sorry, we're going to practice cutting this in not halves and not quarters, but now in thirds and in sixes. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to divide this in thirds. And I mean the top part in thirds. So let's draw kind of like a V on top. And that's going to be, you're writing this as pi over 3 and 2 pi over 3. Get it? It's 1 third and then 2 thirds. 1 third and then 2 thirds. If I keep going, let me draw the other ones on the bottom. So everyone pay attention real quick. I'm going to show you guys how to count. One third, two thirds, three thirds. Doesn't that reduce down to pi? Hey, we're there, pi. <clears throat> Keep going. After three would be four pi over three. Five pi over three. And then six pi over three. But doesn't a 6 pi over 3 divide? That's back to 2 pi. We made it all the way around. If we continue off with this, um, let's change this into degrees. This was going to be, OK. So this kind of maybe is a place where we can leap off real quick of how can I change radians to degrees? Now, I want to show you something kind of interesting right here. Everyone take a look right here. What is pi equivalent to? Pi is equivalent to, in degrees, 180 degrees. So one cheap way of doing this, how can I change pi over 3 to degrees? And actually, here's a trick. If we said pi is the same as 180 degrees, now this is the unofficial way. Isn't this another way of saying 180? Yeah, right? Isn't pi just another way of saying 180? And 180 divided by 3 is 60 degrees. So this here will be 60 degrees. Let's do another unofficial way. Okay, this is an unofficial way of converting radians to degrees. Let's say 2 pi over 3. Well, we said pi is another way of saying 180. So you could multiply 2 times 180. I'm too lazy to do that. I'd rather divide first. 18 divided by 3 is 6. That turns out to be 60. 60 times 2 is 120. It's 120. If I keep going, counting 60, 120, 180, 240. 300 and 360. Now, this is just multiples of 6. 6, 12, 18, 24, 30, 36. Those are just multiples of 6. OK, we have one more to go, and that's going to be pi over 6. And that's right here. What is half, what is half of pi over 3? Now, please pay attention to this if you don't know the trick is. Whenever I half something, whenever I half anything, it's always just divide the bottom by 2. Or in this case, stick a 2 on the bottom, pi over 6. Whenever you divide something in half, you're always sticking a 2 on the bottom. Think about the number 10. What's half a 10? It's 
stick a two on the bottom. What's half of eight? Stick a two on the bottom. Whenever you stick a two on the bottom, you are just halving it. And please take that into consideration here. If I want to half pi over three, just stick a two on the bottom. That's pi over six. Now officially, just to repeat, uh, whenever you divide fractions, you multiply by the reciprocal. The reciprocal is two over one. Oops, sorry, my bad, I don't know why I did that. It's one over two. Reciprocal is one over two. And that leads us to pi over six. Same answer, but I think my way is a little faster. So what's half of 60 degrees is 30 degrees. So the pi over six is really 30 degrees. And you know what? That's walk around the circle talking in pi over six. So I'm gonna write it on the bottom here. Let me give myself some space. Okay, so don't, don't, don't get mad at me for this part. It's gonna be a lot of walking. Okay, a lot of walking. Mr. Cole. Yep. Uh, would pi always equal to 180? Yes, that's okay. the conversion. If you look at it right here, pi is 180. It takes okay. two pi to go through a full circle. Half a circle is the same as half of 360. It's 180. So in this case, uh, we'll have to forget about the 3.14 rule? 3.14 is something I'm going to show you guys where it's from in just a little bit. Good okay. question, though. So real quick, let's go pi over 6. Next one is 2 pi over 6. We're walking around the circle in 30 degrees. 3 pi over 6. 4 pi over 6. Uh, 5 pi over 6. 6 pi over 6. Okay. How many of these stupid fractions can you reduce? You can reduce almost all of them. Pi over 6 is done. Doesn't this become pi over 3? Does this become pi over 2? 2 pi over 3? And then 5 pi over 3 and this pi. So if you look here, there's actually only two new ones. Everything else, we've actually drawn on our chart already. If you look here, don't we already have pi over 3? Don't we already have um, 2 pi over 3? Don't we already have pi over 2? We have all these values already written. The only ones we have to add are the ones at the corners. So let's go ahead and add them. Over here on my left. So I could count. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. That's 5 pi over 6. But I'm going to use a trick I just mentioned to you guys before. What fraction am I counting by right now? I'm counting by sixes. And would you be OK for me to say that counting by sixes, this is 6 pi over 6? I'm OK, this is 6 pi over 6. That's the same thing as pi. And if I'm one short, see I'm one short, what's one short of 6? One short of 6 is 5 pi over six, which is exactly what we would have gotten if I counted forward. But I find counting backwards faster because look at the next line. After six over six, don't we go to seven? So seven pi over six, which is one more than six. So if you can get into your head that I don't have to count all the way from zero, I can go forward and backwards at pi. Halfway through, I can take one step back and one step forward. Now, to do this trick, I got one more problem with you guys. What is 2 pi if I'm counting by sixes? If I'm counting by sixes, 2 pi would be 12 pi over 6. You guys all see 12 pi over 6? So what is 1 short? See, I'm 1 short here. What is 1 short of 12? That is 11 pi over 6. 11 pi over 6 is the 30 degrees just before you make a full 60, the 360. Now I'm going to go back in here and I'm going to fill out the angles. Now, if this is 180 here, what is 30 degrees short of 180? 30 degrees short of 180 is 150 degrees. 
What is 30 degrees more than 180? 18 plus 3 is 21, 210. Over here, 7 pi over 6 is 210 degrees. Let's look at the right. 11 pi over 6. Well, we know it's 360, but what is 30 degrees short of that? That's 330 degrees. So these are our 30 and 60 and 90 angles for this set of unit circles. Okay, this is our 30, 60, 90 for this set of unit circles. So you're going to have to memorize this set of unit circles. So we have 30, 60, 90, 45, 45. 45 and 90, and um, these are our two sets of circles we have to memorize. So you're going to have to memorize this circle up here as well as this circle down here. I'm going to highlight this. This is what you've got to know. I have a question. Yes. Wait, let me pause. Give me a sec. Okay. okay. So let's go to the official way of converting degrees to radians. We can memorize most of them, but here's the conversion. Convert, let's do degrees to radians. And it seems kind of hard, but it's actually one of the easiest things that you did in Algebra 1. If I have 60 degrees, how do I convert this to radians? Equals, oh, sorry, blank to radians, okay? Here's my degrees. And we want to convert to radians. Now here's the gimmick. You multiply by what you want. I want radians. I'm going to write radians on top and degrees on bottom. You decide what you want and you write that on top. Let me give you another one before we do the math. If I gave you 180 degrees, I want radians. So I write radians on top. If I want, let's say, um, 120 degrees, I want radians. So you write pi on top if you want radians. Now the rest is just really reducing the fraction. 6 and 18, let's look at the first one. 6 and 18 cancel out. So 60 and 180 cancel out, leaving me a pi over 3 left. And pi over 3 is, is a radian answer. So we're going to write on the right, radians to degree. We're going to go backwards. Okay, We're going to take pi over 3, and we're going to convert this back to degrees in just a moment. OK, that's the next one. 180 divided by 180. 180 in degrees is just pi. So 180 in degrees to radians is just pi radians. 120 divided by 180. Hey, I can divide, can I divide them both by 60? 120 divided by 60 is 2. 180 divided by 60 is 3. That's my radian conversion. Now, to go backwards, it's actually just as easy. You just want to be careful about this. To go backwards, we flip it. And if I want to go back to degrees, we write degrees on top. 180 degrees and we're gonna cancel out our pies. So look here, the pies divide out, and we're left with 18 divided by three is six, so it's 60. Back to where we started from. Pi, if I want degrees, I write the degrees on top. The pies divide out, and we're left with 180. Back to where we started from. Two pi over three. If I want this back into degrees, I write degrees on top. I don't overthink it. I don't say what if. I just write it. And then I deal with the fractions afterwards in the pi. 18 divided by 3 is 6. 6 times 2 is 12. 120. Back to where we started from. So the goal is this. You choose. Choose. Do we choose pi over 180? or 180 over pi. It's one or the other. If I want to make radians, I put pi on top. If I want to make degrees, 
I put 180 on top. Okay. So um, I want to just go for just a little bit longer. Sorry, we're, we're kind of hanging in there. It's we want to go back to that original formula. And that's theta is equal to S over R. And I want to describe to you where we came up with this idea of radians. And, and what's the big deal about this stupid thing called radians? So if you draw any circle, what is the only special point on the circle? It's not even on the circle. By definition of a circle, there's only one distinguishing feature, and that's the center. Every circle has a center. And if you remember in geometry, a circle is all the points equal distance, the same distance away from the center. Okay, if it's, if there's no point, then it's not a circle. Now here's something kind of cool. Every early, early civilization that was worth its grain and salt had a version of radians, had a version of pi. And what they did was, now, don't freak out. They went ahead and they drew the diameter. But doesn't the diameter go through the center of a circle? And that's true for all circles. Oops. The diameter. Now, my question is, how many diameters would fall around the circle? If I could wrap my circle in diameters, how many diameters would you get? Let's start wrapping. I'm going to start wrapping. If we were in class, this is a lot easier to illustrate. Imagine if I could wrap this here onto the outside of a circle. That looks like one diameter, right? This would be another diameter, right? This would be another diameter. It turns out you would take you one, two, three, and a little bit. And it turns out we call that 3.14. Pi is 3.14 because pi refers to the number of diameters that can fit around a circle. But you know this as a different equation. You know this equation as circumference is 2 pi r. So how many radiuses fit around a circle? And this formula here is this formula here. It's actually the exact same formula, where circumference is S. How much of the arc do you want? I want the full circle. The full circle is described by C. And if we say um, C divided by R is 2 pi, that's actually our radians. The circumference of a circle is described by 2 pi r. And if we divide by r, how many radiuses are in that circle? Well, it turns out it's 6.28 dot, 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 dot. Because if the diameter is the full, radius is half of that. So instead of 3.14, it would be 6.28. Now, this formula is what you're going to use for a lot of different things. If I ask you, um, let's say theta is equal to pi over 4, and the radius of the circle is 1. Let's draw that out. I have a circle with a radius of 1. And I told you the arc is pi over 4. How much of the circle is in the arc? What would the S be? Use the formula. Theta is equal to S over R. We know theta is pi over 4. We know R is 1. So S is equal to pi over 4. So that's just pi over 4. So on your homework, they will be asking you what is the arc length given the radian, radians given the degree. 
if I want to go the other way, if I tell you S is equal to, um, let's say, um, 5, and the R is equal to 4, okay, we just plug it in. Theta is equal to S over R. Theta is equal to 5 over 4. That's your answer. If there's no pi, there's no pi. We're just plugging it in. If I gave you s is equal to 2 pi and r is equal to 2, okay, and I ask you, what is your radians? What would the angle be? So I'm saying something like some arc value, some arc value is 2 pi. We know the radius is 2. How much of an angle do we have? What angle would have covered that? I don't care. Theta is equal to s over r. That's 2 pi over 2. Theta is pi. Now, this seems kind of lame, just plugging the equation. But this is our fundamental rule for radians. Now, let me show you guys something that's a little trippy now. Imagine if we start the other way, and I gave you the radius is equal to 2. Radius is equal to 2. What would the circumference of the circle be? The circumference is 2 pi r. Circumference would be 2 pi 2. The distance around my circle is 4 pi. Right? 4 pi? Duh. In our previous problem, didn't we say the arc itself was 2 pi already? The arc itself ate up. The arc ate up. 2 pi already. Isn't 2 pi half my circle? So what angle do we need to get there? We needed pi. The arc would have to have been pi. And they're exchangeable. We can work back and forth using this formula. I think this is one of the easiest formulas to remember. Theta is equal to s over r. And you can write this actually a dozen, not a dozen, but a couple different ways. You write theta, r is equal to s. I've seen that in books. I've seen r is equal to s over theta, right? Just some algebra manipulation. So we can use this formula in a lot of different ways. Okay, I'm gonna stop here.